Johns Hopkins, I guess it is a highly respected, great place. They did a, stu a, a study, comprehensive, the country's best and worst prepared for an epidemic. And the United States is now, we're rated number one. We're rated number one for being prepared. The president last night seeking an attaboy here for the U.S. response to the coronavirus during his at times rambling and unscripted news conference. But the president was hardly done. Because of all we've done, the risk to the American people remains very low. But that's not remotely being on the same page as the Centers for Disease Control because the CDC says it's not a question of if, but when the virus will spread in America. Then the president doubled down again, disagreeing with his top health officials. Do you trust your health officials to give you good information? Or oh, do you sure. trust your own instincts? More? I don't think I have. They've said it could be worse, and I've said it could be worse, too. I also think, no, I don't think well, it's well, inevitable. Well, I don't think it's inevitable. Now, the head of the National Institute of Infectious Diseases also contradicted what we heard from the president last night when it comes to vaccines. The vaccine is coming along well, and in speaking to the doctors, we think this is something that we can develop fairly rapidly, a vaccine for the future. It still would not be any applicable to the epidemic unless we really wait about a year to a year and a half. Then there's Trump's choice here to helm this. You have the vice president, Mike Pence, who apparently now is going to be running point. When, just as a reminder, Pence was governor of Indiana. He was criticized for his slow response to the HIV outbreak that they had in a particular rural community. And when the idea of a needle exchange came up to slow that spread, he said he'd have to prey on it to figure out what to do. Plus, he also said smoking doesn't kill people. And just as a frame of reference, Indiana ranked 41st in the nation in health while Pence was was living in the governor's mansion. Now, I'm going to close the wind up here with a portion of an op-ed piece that was in the Washington Post. The administration's latest budget calls for a $3 billion cut for global health programs, including a 53% cut in funding for the World Health Organization. This comes on top of earlier budget cuts that force the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to downsize its global health security initiative in 39 out of 49 countries. I want to bring in our guest, Dr. Uh, Shata Chakraborty, she joins us. She's an expert on pandemics and taking out all of the politics, Shada. I didn't want my president to be going off the cuff last night. Um, it, this was no, there was no preparation, there was no scripting, there was no coherence with the health agencies. Uh, he seemed to be shocked outright that, you know, a lot of people die of the flu. Uh, that was a revelation to him last night. Again, People were looking for reassurances that the government was taking this seriously and that we were prepared and we had a plan. He seemed to say, nothing to worry about here. He had an idea in mind and he was going to lead with it, but then however additional time ahead of the briefing, he gave to the head of the deputy director of the CDC and the head of NIAID that he must have been then convinced leading up to the press conference and therefore could not stick to whatever preparation he had in his mind. And so he had to bring up the flu because that was such an obvious comparison to show where this virus plays in relation to the existing infrastructures and existing preparations that we already have under underway and in place. And that's where he got confused and that's where the sort of rambling began. And this is often what happens to the president when he comes up against scientific facts. I want to get to one exchange. Um that the president had uh, with CNN's um, chief medical correspondent, uh, uh, Dr. Um, Gupta, and specifically the pretense of this was the president came out and was shocked, and he believed the rest of the audience in the room and at home was shocked as to how many people die of the flu every year. I'm not a doctor, nor do I pretend to be one on TV, but this was not a revelation to me, but apparently it was to the leader of the free world. Let's listen to the exchange, and then I want to get some context from you. Flu has a fatality ratio of about 0.1%. Correct. Uh, this has a fatality ratio of somewhere between 2 and 3%. Uh, well, given we that, think, the fact we, think, we, we don't know based exactly. Based on the numbers so far. And the flu is higher than that. The flu is much higher than that. There's more people who get the flu, but this yeah. is spreading, or it's going to spread maybe within communities. That's it may. expectation. It may. That, does, that, does that worry you? Because that seems no. to be what worries the American No, because people. we're ready for it. The mortality rate that... You know, Dr. Gutu is trying to get across is 0.1% for 
for the regular flu and two to three percent for basic math that's 20 to 30 times more um, fatalities on a percentage basis happen if you get coronavirus versus the general flu but the president was promoting the idea that you had nothing to be concerned about if you contracted this I I'm not trying to make this out to be Ebola but the president went the complete different uh, direction here and that at least to me was dangerous so in terms of the current present risk to Americans, it is the seasonal flu is still a greater risk. That being said, from what we, the testing and the analysis that we've done so far, do say that the coronavirus actually does, could potentially pose a much greater threat, not just to Americans, but all over the world. If the transmission and the fatality rate stay as is and continue to infect and spread in, in the way that we initially saw, Absolutely. This is something to take very seriously. And that is why in the U.S., because we still are just on the brink of seeing this really become exposed to the public, we're still very much in phase one, where we're preparing and we're still looking to contain the virus. Other parts of the world that have already now engaged with this virus are moving in towards mitigation. And the idea there is to reduce the spread of harm of this because we know it's coming. Inevitably, it's coming. We have gotten a break in terms of the window of this, um, uh, primarily in Asia. Obviously, that's where the exposure was first. Uh, we now see in certain parts of Europe they're getting it. Have we used the time, the heads up efficiently? I've noticed certain states, um, you know, different health commissioners and even governors are trying to take a, but there doesn't seem to be a coherent national plan on this. Has the federal government used the time efficiently? Do we have the right people and, and um, both funding in place to really get ahead of this so we can mitigate it when it comes here? Or are we playing catch up? We're playing catch up. We're being extremely reactive. And that is the worst thing that this administration has done in being proactive and preparing us for what will be an inevitable infectious disease outbreak that will be lethal. What you need is a proactive interagency group in place that does not worry about telling whoever is in power exactly what needs to be done based on the reality of the risk that is being faced and the magnitude of that risk, that is what this administration doing away with is so irresponsible and so scary for the rest of us who work in this space. Dr. Chakrabarty, I appreciate the time here. Um, hopefully um, this is not as bad as some fear um, and um, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to be talking in the near future. Thank you again for your time tonight. Thank you. All right, everybody, when we come back, uh, we will pivot uh, to politics, to the 2020 race, and how more and more Dems are getting worried about one Bernie Sanders. We're going to show you what they're saying and also discuss whether or not they can actually do anything to stop him if he keeps rolling up those wins.